Let's get stuck into the New South Wales election more broadly now with the Red Bridge Group Director Simon Welsh. Simon, only three days to go. Uh, look, a couple of weeks ago we were talking about how um, remarkable or unremarkable this campaign was. The focus uh, groups you were doing uh, were coming up with quote-unquote nothingness uh, when we spoke a couple of weeks ago. Now I think um, voters are, are more focused on it. But what are the seats to watch? Because we look at the polls uh, and they're close, but when you look at the seats that Labor needs to win and the Liberals need to hold on to, it's, uh, it's all of a sudden... Not close at all, is it? Yeah, thanks, Laura. It's it's yeah, it's really it's spotty. It is the way I would describe it. I think that the polls tightening. Um, I think certainly speak to to the Liberal Party running a, a very good sort of moderate conservative campaign. Uh, I think I think that seems to be working. Um, and so I, I don't think we're going to see large swings, you know, large swathes of seats where, where a party can get a run on, you know, Labor can get a run on and pick up three or four or five seats in a, in a certain part of Sydney. And, and the demography of Sydney sort of doesn't really allow that. So it, it's sort of patchy. I'd be looking for, for sort of seats where that alignment of, of demography and being close enough for, for Labor to pick up. So, so when you put that sort of overlay over the top of it, you talking about seats like potentially things like East Hills and Riverstone um, being being ones to watch. I'd also be watching quite closely some of those new or redistributed seats like your Winston Hills, like your Leppington, like a Heathcote. Um, I think those sort of redistributions potentially add to that sort of demographic opportunity for, for Labor in some of those seats. Then a seat like Parramatta, which which you and I have talked about before, even though they're they're mm. relatively far behind, I think the demographic change, the demographic story there, sort of you know, gives Labor a real live opportunity in Parramatta. Then you've got in in these Labor sort of liberal contests, then you've got some some areas where I think the One Nation story could be quite interesting. I, I think we'll definitely see One Nation take votes, particularly off the Liberal Party, and we know that. One Nation voters tend to exhaust their votes. They don't you know, sort of fill out their full preferences yep. at much higher rates than other voters. So probably Penrith is the big one to watch in, in that vein. But if Labor's having a good night, if One Nation's having a really good night and hiving off lots of those votes, even areas like Camden or, or a Goulburn could come into play as well. The problem is you, you add up all those seats that I've just mentioned, you know, and put in a little bit of a margin of error, you, you're sort of talking seven, eight, maybe nine on a really good night. Mm. Um, which doesn't get you to 47 if, if yeah. you labour. Um, so they're going to be looking for opportunities, maybe sort of a Holesworthy, a ride, or even regional opportunities like a Vega. So there's a lot that needs to go right for Labor on the night to, to hit that sort of magic number. Yeah, that's right. 